Hello there and welcome back to the video tutorials. Uh, if you haven't done so until now, please refer to the video info, that's the extra video information that's usually on the right side of the video uh, here on YouTube. Uh, pretty much every single of the videos has uh, this uh, extra useful information in the video info, especially the forum which I put up recently for the purpose of uh, uh, trying to put together some practice programs for uh, you viewers to uh, practice your C++ skills so that you don't just watch videos that are uh, pretty much conceptual and uh, theoretical you can actually try it out for yourself um, uh, though that's of course besides for the fact of you yourself trying out a whole bunch of different stuff that we learned already even without these uh, practice projects. Again, it is only by much practice and testing trial and error that you will actually internalize and remember well all the stuff that we learned so far in the videos. And on the side it's a lot of fun. You can start putting together a whole bunch of neat little stuff uh, with the lessons we learned so far. Okay, so uh, if you thought functions were powerful, let's learn something a lot more powerful than that. Or whatever, equally powerful. We're going to learn now about loops. Loops means that if you wanted to print out to the screen something uh, ten times, and uh, meanwhile you've been doing so by typing this whole line uh, ten times, well, it would be pretty awful if this is how it had to work to make something happen many many times that you just have to type it over and over again that's why C++ has the concept of loops which is basically like telling the compiler uh, I'd like this piece of code over here to happen ten times or however many times you'd like it to run so the, when the program is running it will be looping, it will be going through this piece of code uh, once, twice, three times, four times, however many times you told the compiler to loop through this piece of code. So let's start with the for loop. The for loop is written just like that. You start off by typing for and this will basic basically mean that for every time the conditions meet uh, I'd like to execute a certain piece of code. Now the word for is followed by an opening and closing parentheses and it has to have inside of it two semicolons and after the parentheses we have an opening and a closing brace. Now in the parentheses we have three sections and it's divided up pretty much like this. You have before the first semicolon, before the second semicolon and then before the end. The first section over here is is called the uh, initialization phase and what you do over here is you would like to declare create uh, maybe a couple of variables which you'd like to use for this for loop here's a variable I would typically create I would make an integer and I would give it a name counter and I would give the counter number zero so as you see in this first part of the parentheses which is right before the first semicolon I would create and even assign a, a variable much like I would do on a regular line anywhere else in my codes when I would create a variable just like that. So that's why it's called the initialization phase because here is the part where you prepare one or two or maybe three variables for your uh, for loop and you will be probably using these variables just as long as we have the for loop around. They are pretty much going to be only necessary to use during the for loop because the variables which are created in this section over here are limited to the scope of these braces over here. So even though I said in a different video that usually scope rules only apply to when you create a variable inside of braces but with the for loop, when you create a variable even inside of the parentheses part over here, it's as if you created it inside of the braces. 
but we have without getting too much ahead of ourselves so again we have the keyword for we have an opening and closing parentheses and we have two braces and then we have three sections in the parentheses the first section is where you will be creating one or more of a variable you can create one or more just like you would create on one line uh, one or more variable like this separated by a comma you would make another one and then another one you can do the same thing over here separated by comma and create another variable and then another one etc etc however you can only create of one type so you have to decide if all of your variables that you'll be making will all be uh, integer or maybe character or something else because they must all be uh, from the same type for now I'm just going to create a integer variable right over here I'm going to call it counter and I'm going to give it the value of 0 next we get to the second part of the for loop over here is the condition this condition over here is pretty much like the inside of a of the parentheses of a if statement which means that a boolean expression is going to be evaluated and if it's true if the result of whatever is over here is true then the program will loop again it will go through again all the code that is inside the braces if whatever is inside over here is not true then the program will skip ahead till right after the closing brace and continue whatever is later on here is a condition I would typically write. I might want to evaluate if my counter didn't surpass a limit of times I'd like the loop to loop through the code. So right now I'm testing, I'm making sure that the variable counter is less than the number 100. And each time I'm going to loop through this piece of code over here, I'm going to increase the counter variable by 1 so that after one loop counter will no more be 0 it's going to be 1 and after a second loop it's no more going to be 1 it's going to be 2 and so forth and so forth until at some point counter is going to be 99 and then 100 once it reaches 100 this expression over here will result to be false because it is no more less than 100 right now it is equals to 100 and at that point the for loop will finish and here we come to the last part in the beginning of the for loop which is where you could take some sweet little action each time we loop through the loop so the truth is that all the real action that happens during the loop is in the middle right over here between the opening and the closing brace however we also have a little section right over here which is also a little useful to make things clearer for example here's where I would increase the counter by one each time the round uh, looped through this loop so again, here's what happens. We are declaring a for loop, which means we are going to make a piece of code which we would like the program to do over and over and over again and again. We start off by having a little section over here which we can use to create a variable which could help us out during the decision making of the for loop or anything else we'd like to use inside of the for loop over here. Next, in the middle section, we have a truth or false evaluation which will help us decide if we want to continue looping or not and will help us decide when to finish looping and start continuing the program further on or else we're just going to keep on looping and looping forever we have to know exactly when to stop what's the condition that it depends to know when to stop this loop and finally we have the actual action that's going on in our loop which can be over here and over here and usually this little compartment here is used for the action which is useful to the for loop conditions so every loop this is what happens this part is only executed the very first time the loop runs it doesn't happen every single time the loop starts again it is only created once next up the loop tests is this true or not if this is true then we continue whatever is inside over here and then we execute this little piece if this happens to be not true then we will skip over the whole block of code over here and skip over to whatever comes next in the code in this particular case the text hello world will be printed in the console window a hundred times as we see right over here 